Hello, this is Heather Hoffman, and I'm here today to share a card using the adorable She Gnome from the Lucky to Know You release that happened uh, earlier this month. Finally getting her around to um, getting getting it all finished and posted. I've already die cut all of the pieces. Instead of cutting them from different colors of cardstock, um, I like to do um, just kind of cut everything from white cardstock and color it in. Um, for today, I'm going to use Copic markers. I kept those negative die cups and I added some post-it tape back behind. What this allows me to do is kind of set those, um, each of those pieces in place and it'll hold them in one spot so I don't have to have my finger on there and try and color around um, as I'm working on them. Keeps me from getting ink on my fingers and also from a little spot on um, each of those die cut pieces that you have to worry about not showing. And I'm going to blend several different colors on each piece. Um, I went ahead and finished off um, those little uh, bows as well because I wanted to do those blue. So I thought I'll do all of the blue bits while I'm doing um, that main part of the hat. And I'm blending just various colors onto each of the pieces. I used three shades of blue there for the hat. I'm going to use some various shades of gray for the little um, hair braids on the side there. And generally what I do is I like to start with my softest color and just build up my color. Um, there's another spot where I do the opposite and start with my darkest. Um, play with it and just kind of see which one you prefer. Sometimes I like it one way and sometimes I like it another way. So I don't, I can't really say that I always do it one way or the other. And I know some people have um, specific preferences, but feel free to kind of play with it and do what works for you. All right, we're going to do the little nose on there and just kind of sticking that in the middle there. Again, the same thing, two colors just to kind of blend on there. And actually three, I decided to add a little tiny bit of pink. And then we're gonna do the heart that goes into the hat. And then once we do all of these big main pieces, I also punched all those little tiny um, heart pieces out. We'll get to that here in a minute, but punching all those little heart pieces out. And I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with those. I did eventually end up coloring them, but I did all the large pieces first before I decided um, exactly what I wanted to do on that part, so. Same thing, the three colors just kind of blend and shade. And I set it all so that all my shadows were kind of, um, for the most part, on the left upper side. I kind of just wanted to set, just to keep it all consistent. All right, now all those little tiny hearts. Now these were <laughs> little tiny and kind of hard to color, but I just grabbed one blue and just kind of flicked those over. They were too small really to set in place on my post-it tape. So I just kind of the marker on them to get some color on them and I'll carefully set those in place in a little bit they're actually not as hard as you would think all right I'm using liquid glue to adhere all of these onto that background piece I like the liquid glue because I can kind of set it in place and like you see they're kind of slided around a little to make sure I have it um, perfectly placed this liquid glue goes a long way so you only need a little tiny bit just a few little dots um, don't put it on too much or it's going to squish out of the sides there all right, and then you may have noticed I pulled out my jewel picker. I generally use this for sequins and jewels, but it works great for paper piecing in some of those little pieces that are kind of fiddly and hard to get a hold of. So I'm using those for uh, the nose, the bigger heart, and each of those little bitty hearts you might see there as I start tucking those into place. All right, as soon as I have each of those put on there, I'm going to pull out uh, the next step to this card. Oh, yeah, actually, before we do that, um, I do have to put those little bows on her pigtails so a little tiny dot of glue and go ahead and use that jewel picker again just to pop those into place all right now i'm going to pull out some isn't that adorable uh so i'm going to pull out some pattern paper from the moda scrap six by six spring flowers this was actually in the march card kit as well um so it was kind of a fun one to use those papers for something else so i kind of chose how i wanted to layer those up and i um, decided to do a torn border i love the texture of tearing paper um, and putting it on a card. So I trimmed that main panel to the size of an A2 card, the floral a little smaller, so it's kind of a matted effect. And then I left that bottom piece a little longer and I'll trim that down when I get to the right spot. All right, now I use my basic Simon Says Stamp nested circles and some Simon Says Stamp vellum. It doesn't show that much, but it just softens the pattern on the florals there as I put that gnome on there. Kind of helps it pop a little bit more. Um, you don't see it a lot in the photos, but in real life, it's a, a good little bit of a touch. All right, and then I'm gonna add some sentiments using the CZ Design Sentiment Strips. These are the Reverse Miss You set. So I kind of chose a couple of that and then I can start assembling this. So I'm attaching the floral paper and then I'm gonna tuck that vellum just with a bit of sturdy adhesive down at the bottom there. 
And the reason I did it there is because my pattern paper is going to, um, that torn strip I did is going to cover that adhesive. I trimmed off the extra of that vellum, just turning over to the reverse and using scissors. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with that strip at the bottom as well. It's an easy way just to line it up and get it all even. All right, now I started playing with where I wanted to attach that gnome. And I decided it would be kind of fun to tuck it on an action wobble there. So these are some mini action wobbles that um, I got from Simon Says. Perfect size to tuck back on there. And look how fun. It just sits and wobbles and dances now. All right, so now I started kind of playing with how I wanted to put my sentiments on there. And I at first kind of thought putting them off to the side. And then I centered and... I just kind of played with it until it ended up being in a good spot. I put my foam adhesive on the back, and as I stuck it down, I just kind of went, eh, yep, I like it in that spot. So played around, moved back and forth before I pressed it into place and committed. Um, and then I just trimmed down that bottom one to help it fit a little bit better. And then uh, super thin strips of foam adhesive as well on the back of that one. Get all the little pieces on there. Um, Want to make sure it was all the way covered so it would hold in place really well. And then I can tuck that into place. And just like that, we are finished. And as soon as the video concluded, I did add a few sparkly jewels around. And then I added a little bit of glossy accents um, on some of the parts on the image there. But it's super fun interactive card. Thanks so much for coming by today. Have a wonderful day.